Welcome back. Glad to have you here. Say, I'm going to talk about something today that's not the most exciting topic in the world, but I can tell you what, you better understand it because if you don't understand it, it's a deal killer. Uh, it can be quite a big problem if you don't get it. Here's what I want to talk about with you guys today, environmental. Okay, environmental reports. Now, environmental reports are, as you probably know if you watched any of our YouTube um, videos, I did one on due diligence, and you'll hear me talk a lot about due diligence in the context of our putting commercial and investment transactions together. So due diligence gets thrown around a lot in the general world today, but in commercial and investment real estate, due diligence is everything. And whether you're working with a lender or not a lender, due diligence is really important. But when it comes to environmental reports, you guys, we may have no problem, we may have a little problem, and we might have a monster of a problem. And monster of a problems have the equivalent of a very expensive solution. Okay, so that's pretty obvious, right? If we have an environmental issue, what's an environmental issue? Well, maybe it was a dry cleaning business. Um, last year, 10 years ago, 30 years ago, maybe it was a car repair business, car sales, auto body, ATVs, trucks. Maybe there's an old junkyard on that land and somebody cleaned it up and if you looked at it today, there's pretty trees and grass. But you know what? Back in the late 60s, they used to dump stuff there. And then they put some seed down and they put some trees in there and it doesn't look pretty. But you have an environmental nightmare if you think that you're getting that super good deal on that piece of land that used to be a dumping ground. Now this is no joke, okay? I've sold these environmental studies. Actually, sometimes if you don't need to do a full environmental study on a, on a real estate asset, sometimes a bank might say, you know what, we've looked up the property, we feel pretty good about it, here's what I want you to do. I want the seller to fill out a seller questionnaire. And the seller just has to answer to the best of their ability any questions relating to the history of the property, hazardous substance and waste, and the lender will say, I'm fine with that. But if the lender isn't fine with that, we have a potential two-step process when it comes to environmental studies. Starts with a phase one. A phase one, you guys, just simply understand this piece of it. That's when you hire an environmental engineering company and the environmental scientists start working on a comprehensive paper report. That's what the phase one is. Let's think of it as a big fat document with the history of the property and everything surrounding the property. So it's not just the subject site, it's maybe what's across the street, down the block, all right? It might be, again, what was there 10 years ago or much longer. Phase one, paper study. Here's what ends up happening. The phase one gets completed, and then we take a look at the phase one, and we take a look at the summary of the conclusion. If that summary and conclusion says something like, well, we think that there might be a potential issue with this site, Every lender, almost every lender out there has to protect themselves. They need to protect their portfolios, those loan portfolios. They're gonna say, gee whiz, we can't give a loan on a property that might have an environmental problem. There's just a slew of potential issues with something like that. We need to get a phase two. That's when we move into the phase two stage. In a phase two, you can imagine a phase one was a paper study, what's a phase two? Well, now we're really kind of getting our hands dirty. Now we need to bore holes into the floor. We need to soil test. We need to do intrusive testing. Intrusive is just like what it sounds like. I need to dig into this property, literally and figuratively. I need to dig into this property to find out what we've got going on. Maybe it's vapor mitigation, all right? Maybe it is just mold or mildew issues, but we might have vapors coming up out of the ground that we need to put sensors on for a period of time. And you know what really stinks about this, you guys, is that there's a couple pieces. Number one, like when you get into a phase two, like in Minnesota, for instance, the moment we enter into a phase two, suddenly we have the MPCA, Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, and you can bet that just about every state has their own pollution control agency. 
governed by the feds, run by each state, ours, MPCA. Well, the moment we do a phase two, we've involved our Minnesota Pollution Control Agency. It now becomes a formal file, on file, and we now have the government overseeing everything that's going on with this. But here's what I wanted to mention to you before. Outside of now having the government authorities overseeing this really critical issue with this property, which any of us who are in real estate, we kind of know what that means the moment we're dealing with these other governmental compliance type issues. Let's say we have to do this vapor testing. Vapor testing is really, really common in many properties because again, what ends up happening is we may have a contaminant in the soil. The contaminant might be under the concrete slab. So that's why you have to drill holes through the concrete slab, pull your little core out, put your testing um, materials in there, and then run your vapor tests. But a vapor test in May doesn't qualify for a vapor test in December. So, Sometimes, imagine trying to get a deal done and you want to get this thing closed and you need to do a phase two and your closing is 45 days away. And it's winter time in Minnesota, which any of you know, if you know where Minnesota is, we're kind of like very far north, super cold, a really large part of the year. And to do a proper phase two, you need to be able to do summertime testing, wintertime testing. So suddenly, imagine selling a piece of property to have your commercial real estate broker say, hey, listen, we may have a delay in our closing because we need to do vapor testing once thaw happens and the ground thaws out. You get my point here. Suddenly, you see how I just entered into an area like, oh, yuck, this is getting complicated. This deal just got really dirty. In fact, no pun intended. This you, you get the difference, right? Dirty deal, dirty property. Oh my goodness, who wants that? No buyer, no seller, no broker. You gotta deal with it. You gotta navigate these waters because that's the market environment we're in today. Um, now, if you're paying cash or you're doing a seller finance deal like a contract for deed or a land contract, depending upon the, the, the rules of your state, can you forego an environmental report? Sure, you can say the heck with it, I don't need it. But there's a big risk in that. And that's where you gotta make sure that you're working with really good people who know that you don't want to um, make a really bad mistake only to come back and have it get you later to realize that I've got a $100,000 or $150,000 mistake on this asset that could really kill the, uh, the yield, the return on the investment on this property. You get what's going on here. When I talk about what's the ugliest thing within due diligence with commercial properties, that's why we always talk about environmental reports. It's a very dynamic topic. It's dynamic because government's involved. They are changing the rules all the time. Just like in the old days with houses, right? You had a house inspection. Then suddenly it was, well, but what about lead? What about asbestos? What about mold and mildew? What about radon and even Home sales have become complicated with some of those types of environmental issues. And when it comes into commercial properties, we reach into another whole level of the types of due diligence and investigations that we need to do. So guys, I just want you to get this because again, that's why you want really good people working with you. It's our job, the commercial broker, agent, the real estate professional to navigate this for you and with you. This is what we get to do every day. It's a lot of problem solving, okay? It's not the most fun thing in the world, but who cares? You know, we didn't sign up for the fun. We signed up because this is a critical piece of properly representing our clients and navigating these kinds of waters. I hope this was helpful for you to understand a little bit about environmental studies, phase ones and phase two. Listen, we love real estate investing. We love teaching it, training, we love representing clients in it. If you like this stuff, subscribe to our channel. I would hugely appreciate it. Um, ring the bell, become a subscriber, check out our website, resultscommercial.com, find us on social media. If you need anything from us, drop me a note. Always available, I'm happy to help, and thanks for joining me today.